Good morning. Thank you for coming today. Um, although this is a mandatory in service, it's really nice to see the room full. I appreciate that. Uh, we're here to talk about point of use cleaning and um, Jackie uh, Williams, our interim senior director, would like to say a few words before we get started. Hi, good morning. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know that um, we appreciate you coming this morning. It is mandatory. It's mandatory because, um, as you all know, Joint Commission was here, and that was one of our findings in the operating room. Um, they're coming, they're going to be coming back. So within the next 45 to 60 days, the Joint Commission will be coming back to um, visit any part of the hospital really they deem to go into. But they will be coming back specifically to look at four items, one of which is ours. So and that is point of use cleaning. Um, it was viewed um, from different people. I don't want anyone to think going out of this room it was just one person or two people or anything like that. It was um, department-wide, went into CSPD. So um, I want you to um, give everybody your undivided attention this morning. So does anyone have any questions about the Joint Commission survey? This was under infection control, um, and it was because our point of use cleaning was not adequate. So Denise, has, um, we've all put together this great PowerPoint. Denise has done a video for you, you'll see. Um, so please give everybody your undivided attention. And the other thing is um, communication is also going out to your surgeons. So they will know what, you're, what is expected of you, why we have to do it, etc. Okay. So they will be um, on board or off board. It's really not an option. We have to do it. If they come back and they find anything wrong in this area, they can give us another finding and they can actually close our operating rooms down. So this is how important it is. Does everybody have any questions about that real quick? Um, <coughs> and I'll hand it over to Denise. Please give her your undivided attention. And um, the expectation is not only for our scrub nurses, but for our registered nurses in um, the operating room. You also will be responsible for the condition of the instruments going to sterile processing, not just your scrub techs. Okay, it's going to be a team effort, so please um, give her your undivided attention. Thanks. Um, just so you know, we are videotaping today. I'm not a bit nervous. Um, so uh, that's so that we can show it to other people that aren't able to attend today. So we're going to ask that you save questions till the very end. We don't really want to videotape all the questions. So I'll um, do my presentation and then we'll have questions at the very end, okay? So point of use cleaning, it's a must. It's not a, if I have time, it's a must. And when Joint Commission was here, they had uh, multiple observations of gross soil being left on instrumentation. And that is infection control 02.0201, just in case you wanted to know, yeah. Uh, AORN has a guideline for care of surgical instruments. Um, it actually came out in 2014. Um, it's a 50-page document. They talk a lot about it. We're going to go over that. And one of the things they say is instruments must be cleaned as soon as possible after use. Uh, AAMI, uh, the, the Bible for sterile processing, if you will, like AORN is for us. It's called ST79. They say gross soil is removed as soon as possible. And following these guidelines isn't just a mandate. It's the right thing to do for our patients. So what we need to do, we need to keep instruments clean during the procedure, and you do that with a moist sponge. How many of you were taught that when you went to tech school? Um, and also, we need to take care of our flexible endoscopes. If that scope is going to sit for a while, we need to run some water through it, sterile water, to keep that scope from getting dried inside. All the instrument box locks need to be opened. A box lock is the lock that's here. It's actually this box lock right here. It needs to be open when you send it, not locked, but open. Um, and any instrument that can be taken apart needs to be disassembled, like this pool suction tip. It comes in two pieces when you get it. It should be in two pieces when you send it back. 
Um, and then spray generously with pre-cleanse. And you guys know that we trialed several different products and came up with pre-cleanse as the best product for us. It's a gel, it sticks to the instruments and it keeps them moist. And then transport in a closed container marked uh, biohazard. So the little sign on the back of the case carts need to be turned to biohazard when you take it. So why, why do we have to do this? Well, biofilm is something that can form on instruments very quickly. Once a biofilm forms, it's very hard to clean. Biofilm, you can see it in your everyday life. You, how many of you have pets? You have a dog dish and it gets that sliminess around the outside of it, that's a biofilm. And once that biofilm forms, it's very difficult for any of the products that we use to clean the instruments to get to the instrument. So we don't want that biofilm to begin to form. It also improves the efficacy of the sterilization process. So even though we can get that biofilm maybe cleaned off of there, it's gonna impact the way it's steam sterilized and the efficacy of that. And oh, did I mention it's the right thing to do for our patients? So biofilm, just a little bit about biofilm. It's really a collection of microorganisms that attach to the surface, and then they begin to attach to each other, and that's why that film forms. The bacteria within a biofilm can be up to 1,000 times more resistant to a given agent, so an antibiotic. So that's why when patients get an infection, it's generally, if it's an implant, due to biofilm. <laughs> and it's very difficult to kill. 65% of all microbial infections are due to biofilm, and it's much easier to clean that device before the biofilm forms. So cleaning is challenging because detergents have such difficulty penetrating that biofilm. That gel becomes a protective gel. It's trying to keep that biofilm uh, intact, so that gel forms to keep it there. So we need to clean them as soon as possible after use uh, in surgery to reduce that production. And then flushing lumens, not just endoscopes, but any, any instrument with a lumen needs to be flushed. And we flush with sterile water, right? Never saline. Why is that? Russ, corrosive, very corrosive to the instrument. So when we do that, we're decreasing the chance that the biofilm is going to form. Uh, biofilms can begin to form on grossly contaminated medical devices. Pretty grossly contaminated, right? Probably biofilm was already forming. It forms quickly inside of endoscopes because they're moist. Any area that stays moist will be uh, more conducive to biofilm formation. So. AMI is the Association for the Advancement of Medical Instrumentation, and that's what I said was the Bible for sterile processing. So what they say is gross soil must be removed at the point of use. Have we heard that just a few times? They're all driving that point home. Prior to transport, the instruments need to be prepped in such a way as to prevent organic soils from drying. So they want the instruments to stay wet. This can be accomplished by placing a towel moistened with water over the instruments or use of an instrument spray designed for pretreatment, which we <coughs> chose pre-cleanse. And just so you know, even though they say it's either or, they are looking to see that you have a product that you're using for pretreatment. So it's a good thing that we chose one. So treating those instruments not only prevents biofilm, but it also reduces corrosion pitting and rusting that can occur on the instruments. And these words come verbatim from what AAMI says, okay? Exactly what they say. So now we'll take a look at what, joint, at what AORN says, which AORN has a lot to say, as you guys know. They created this guideline, like I said, in 2014, and they developed it as an optimal level of practice. So the first statement that AORN says is instruments must be cleaned and decontaminated as soon as possible after use. So quickly, as soon as you use them, like we were all taught. And then they say that preparation for decontamination of the instruments begins at point of use. They say organic material and debris are more difficult to remove when they are allowed to dry. 
removal of organic material and debris at the point of use can improve the efficacy and effectiveness of cleaning and decontamination. Because, you know, they really don't have a chance to adequately decontaminate if we aren't doing our steps first. During the procedure, the scrub person will remove gross soil from the instruments by wiping the surface with a sterile surgical sponge moistened with sterile water, not saline. Periodically during the procedure, the scrub person will use sterile water to irrigate instruments with lumens, including those flexible scopes. Sorry, I keep going back here, but my pointer won't work. Uh, all instruments opened onto the sterile field in the operating room shall be cleaned and decontaminated whether or not they have been used. So they consider everything on your table contaminated, whether you used it or not. And that's because you as the scrub person could contaminate the instruments without being aware of it. Maybe you touch those, you reach back to get some other instruments. Or airborne microorganisms can come into contact with those instruments. So we consider everything on the table contaminated. Aaron also says, in preparation for transport to a decontamination area, sharp instruments must be segregated from other instruments and combined in a puncture resistant container. And an emesis basin is fine for that, or a, a basin, a plastic basin, <laughs> either one. <laughs> Segregation of sharps minimizes the risk of injury to personnel, and of course, disposable sharps, scalpel blades, suture needles, need to be removed and disposed of appropriately. What we're talking about here are instruments with sharp edges, curettes, gouges, uh, things like that that could, uh, could injure. And you can see the number of the recommendation at the bottom, 3E says when an instrument is composed of more than one piece, it needs to be opened and disassembled according to the manufacturer <coughs> IFU, arranged in a manner that will permit contact of the cleaning solutions with all surfaces. So that means when we send instruments to decontam, they need to be opened, right? So all area of the instrument can be uh, cleaned. Delicate instruments, of course, need to be segregated. We want to take care of those instruments. We don't want to damage them. Uh, so during transport and decontamination, they need to be segregated, placed on top of heavier instruments or in a puncture-proof container. So fiber optic uh, light cables, scopes, those kinds of things need to go on top. You don't ever put another tray on top of that. Those are very expensive instruments also, and um, we don't want to damage those. And it goes on, 3G. Instruments need to be kept moist until they are cleaned. A towel moistened with water placed over the instruments may be used. Instruments that cannot be cleaned immediately will be treated with an instrument cleaner according to manufacturer IFU. So our instruments aren't cleaned the second they go into decontam. They have quite a few instruments, so that's why we need to spray. Liquids used to soak contaminated items will be discarded before transportation. So I'll be going over step by step uh, the expectations. That's why we have a little setup up here. And our manufacturer uh, IFU for pre-cleanse uh, says it is a point of use processing gel. It's ready to use. Uh, it's neutral <coughs> pH. Uh, it's designed to keep the soil moist and initiate the cleaning process. Uh, and it's used on reusable surgical instruments prior to decontamination. It clings to the instrument, it's a gel, so it begins to loosen the soil and maintain moisture during transport. You're to evenly cover the surgical tray of instruments. It is not hazardous or irritating, it may be sprayed in the presence of the patient. The reason that that's different than other sprays is it's a gel, so it doesn't aerosolize. It contacts the instrument and stays on the instrument. However, PPE should be worn when dispensing. At a minimum, gloves. I would definitely wear a face shield as well. And that's straight from the manufacturer IFU. So the process. So we spent quite a bit of time uh, developing the process. We met multiple times to discuss it. We went around to departments to watch the processes. And we think we've come up with something that 
is workable for you, but meets the requirements at the same time. Because as Jackie said, we don't really have a choice. We have to do this. So we're, we tried to develop a way that would minimize the time that you spend uh, doing the process to your instruments, but still meet the requirements. So drum roll please, here's the process. Uh, step one, you need to have a basin of sterile water uh, immediately available on your field, and we should always have that anyway for fire prevention, right? So you should have a basin of sterile water. If you need additional gross soil removal, you can have a basin off your field uh, next to your back table in a ring stand. You can have as many of those as you need. I know sometimes in total instruments or in total cases, there's a lot of gross soil on there. So you may need several so that you can keep that uh, knocked down. Um, and then be sure that you have um, the instruments that you're going to use again clean and back on your mail. Uh, keep a moist soft good for wiping down instruments at all times. That could be a Raytec, that could be a lap sponge, whichever you feel uh, most comfortable using. But all gross blood and bone and tissue must be removed from the instruments. Okay. So we're going to ask that you remove your disposable sharps like you do now. Your, uh, your needles, your blades, get rid of those in a, dispo in a sharps disposal in the room. Open all the box locks. Disassemble the instruments and move them from the back table into the mesh pan. <coughs> Remember, even instruments not used in the procedure are considered contaminated, so they all get sprayed back in the pan. Place all instruments with sharp edges in an emesis basin or large basin so we can segregate those. And then we're going to ask you to change into clean gloves. Uh, be sure to perform hand, perform hand antisepsis before you do that. Uh, and then spray all the instruments very well with the pre-cleanse. It's safe to spray pre-cleanse on cameras, on scopes, on drills. It's safe for anything. Just don't spray it directly down the electrical portion of the drill. Just on the front of it is fine. And then we're going to ask you to place a moistened towel over the top of that. And then put it in uh, the cart to be taken uh, back to decontam. Needs to be in a closed case cart. Uh, we're going to ask that you wipe down the pre-cleanse container with a cavi wipe before you put it back in the holder in the room so the next person has a clean can. We're asking also that you leave the preference card on the cart. Um, I have a quick question. The cards that are on the cart, do they have the room number and the surgeon on it? and the patient's name. That's fine then, just the card on the card is fine. Right, Bill? Is that okay? So you can keep your, uh, leave the preference card off, but leave that little card on there if you would, please. So that's what the instrument set would look like covered with the wet towel. Then we transport that in a closed uh, container, a closed case cart, um, <laughs> into the decontamination area. Make sure that your uh, your cabinet is marked biohazard, flip that little sign. If there isn't one on the case cart, we ask that you put a biohazard sticker on it and we have some for the case carts that don't have it. I think we're in the process of getting that on all of them. I did show the new case cart over to the right uh, that we'll be getting. Um, not sure exactly when that's happening, but soon. And we will have the biohazard uh, markers on the back of it too that you can flip. We ask that you not spray pre-cleanse pre inside of the cart. This is mainly for CVOR. That is because um, we need to wipe the inside of that case cart out and it becomes very difficult if it has pre-cleanse all over it. So if you can spray the instruments before you put them in there, that would be great. So we've had education on this before. How many of you remember me talking about biofilm before? That was actually in 2015. It was a competency in 2016. I had a little spinner game that you played and we talked about uh, point of care use of instruments. And then um, in 2017, it was a competency this year for uh, surgical techs. So going forward, you're responsible for the point of use cleaning of instruments. And there will be disciplinary action if it isn't followed. So we have a 
step-by-step -step audit tool that we'll be using after the education is complete. Everybody has until May 9th, just one week to complete the education. They'll have uh, a video. I hope it's ready by then, Doug. Um, so then after education is complete, we'll begin to do audits to help you comply because none of us want to see our ORs get closed down, right? That would not be good for any of us. So I wanted to show you step by step what we're talking about with the setup up here in front. Are you okay, Doug? <coughs> so I'm going to have a basin of sterile water. I have some water in here ready to go. Um, if I need additional, I can have it in uh, a ring stand back here uh, on the other side of my uh, back table. Um, I know I'm not dressed appropriately, but let's just pretend. Um, so we need to keep um, a soft good available to wipe down instruments. So just something that is, is rinsed off and as you use an instrument, just wipe it down, right? So pretty simple. Remove the disposable sharps at the end of the case so you're going to get rid of your sharps. We'll pretend like I have a sharps disposal. It's over here. I'm going to get rid of all that. Um, I'm going to open all the box locks and disassemble. So my instruments are clean because I kept them clean, right, throughout the case. We are going to ask that you take the mat out of the bottom. Put your instruments in the pan, opening all the box locks of the instruments that you had on your mayo. This is my mayo. I didn't want to bring the whole OR down here. So I'm going to open all of these instruments that I used, right? And I'm going to put everything into my pan. Open. Even scissors. Open. So anything that is potentially sharp, like these gelpies and these rakes, I'm going to put in a separate pan. I'm going to segregate that from, from the rest of my instruments. These instruments that are on the back table, should all be open, right? Because you don't open them until you bring them up. So simply grab a stack, open them up, lay them in your pan. That should go pretty quick. All the box locks are open. I would have a gown on. I would have eye protection on. I didn't want to wear a mask because I wanted you to hear me. So I'm going to open everything, put it into the, into the pan. It's a major tray, so there's quite a bit. My pool suction tip, I'm going to make sure is disassembled. Right, any removable parts are disassembled. Put all my instruments in here. I would have a gown on. I'll put my eye protection on. Okay. So I'm going to come over and, um, and get my pre-cleanse. So I'm going to take my gloves off that I have on. I'm going to clean my hands. Put on some disposable gloves. And the thinking here is that your hands are now clean. Uh, cleaner than your... Than your hand you had during surgery and your gloves so or we thought too you could take if you double glove you could which you should be you could take off your outer glove and you would have a clean glove underneath and I'm going to spray my instruments be sure your container is open and I'm going to spray that generously very well over all the instruments okay and I can even spray underneath because I have a mesh pan now and I can spray my segregated instruments and put them on top. And then the whole thing goes inside of my closed case cart, which I didn't bring down either, but I'll put it inside the closed case cart. This can go separately with it. So spraying very generously is, is a great idea. Underneath, when you have the, uh, the silicone mat out, it's easy to spray underneath. Be sure to leave the card on the cart 
Um, and then transport those contaminated instruments, making sure that you flip your sign to biohazard. Um, and we just ask that you not spray the, pre the pre cleanse inside of the cart. Do you need a wet towel, yeah, oh, yes, thank you. And then we would take a wet towel. You can squeeze it out and just lay the wet towel over the top of all of the instruments. Kind of just a double uh, that we're keeping things nice and moist. Thank you for reminding me. Just like that. 